Good morning, how are we doing this wonderful day? We are going to finish the series on prayer, praise, and prophecy. So with that, let's pray, and hopefully you got your Bibles out, turn it to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and then we will get started. Father, we ask you right now that you would bless this time and bless the reading and the teaching of your word. We thank you, Father, that we have ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord says. We thank you, Lord, that our hearts are good soil, ready to receive the incorruptible seed of the word of God, and that, Lord, we are not just hearers today, but we are doers, for the doer is blessed. In Jesus' name and to his glory, and all the people say it. Say it out loud right there in your living room or your office or wherever you are. Amen. Okay, well, let's go and do this uh, teaching. I'm not going to be a really preaching today. I'm uh, going to be more explaining. And so that would be the teaching part. So I'm um, going to go now. I am not, when, we th when you think of prophecy here and, and me talking about prophecy, I'm not talking about end time prophecy. Okay. I know if you're on Facebook or maybe Instagram or other avenues, and there's a lot of talk about end times now, like this COVID virus is has something to do with the end times. Uh, that's not where I'm going, okay? This is completely different part of what prophecy is. This is New Testament prophecy about uh, uh, that Paul spoke of to the Corinthian church. So, and I've been asked in the past by a couple different people about teaching on end time prophecy. Actually, when we get back, I'd kind of like to want to do it. It wouldn't, uh, I'm not going to do the book of Revelation. It's extremely, let alone controversial. It's, it's very uh, uh, difficult. And But I, I've studied a lot of Matthew 24 and also in Luke 18 and 21 and, or 19 and 21 and also Matthew or Mark 13. But in any case, that's not where we're, we're not. We're not going there, okay? In the future, yes. Tonight or today, no. So let's, uh, uh, now Paul starts in and brings this up uh, in 1 Corinthians 14 because it was something that was going on in the first century church. And that through my study, and it's not, it doesn't take a, a, a Bible scholar or a theologian to figure out that this gift of prophecy is still as valid today as it was in the first century church. Okay, so let's go up and, well, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 12 because that kind of sums up where we're going. So he says, even so you, since you are zealous for spiritual gifts, let it be for the edification of the church that you seek to excel. So he's saying there, listen, this, the Corinthians were very zealous for spiritual gifts. If you go to chapter 12, we're not going to go there, but he lists the nine gifts of the spirit there, one of which is prophecy. Now, they were very spiritual uh, about, or, well, they were a spiritual group. Uh, they were fleshly also. Uh, Paul dealt with a lot of issues with the Corinthians. But he never said, stop with the gifts. He just was correcting them on how they should operate. And so uh, he wants to tell them there in verse 12, he says, it's for the edification of the church. It's for the building up. It's for the strengthening of the church. And he says in verse 1, he says, Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. So he doesn't list, he doesn't list the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, a gift of faith, gift of healings, gift of miracles, tongues with interpretation. The number one gift he mentions of the of the nine spiritual gifts is in in chapter 12 is prophecy and he said now the first important thing and that's why we have chapter 13 all of that the love chapter that's first of of, of most value is love and then he says desire these gifts but of all of them desire um prophecy and then he defines 
what kind of or what prophesying does as opposed to tongues. So let's just go on in verse 2 and 3. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the spirit he speaks mysteries. So what he's saying here is that they were, uh, you know, very much in tuned about using the, the gift of tongues in the personal use of the gift of tongues. There, so there's the, uh, even though this isn't in the Bible, the, uh, where tongues is uh, for the personal edification of the believer. And so there's the, where the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is what sometimes is called the private prayer language. And then there's the gift of tongues that it is described in 1 Corinthians 12, where it says God distributes those gifts severally as he wills. So there's the part of tongues that is the believer's will to do as he wants. And then there is in the corporate setting, the gift of tongues. And that's what he's talking about here. And, and where it's as God, the Holy Spirit speaks to somebody and then they give the tongue and there's an interpretation with it. the same thing with prophecy is the Holy Spirit speaks to somebody in a corporate setting and then that person gives that word. So he's saying there, listen, when you speak in tongues, whether you do it by yourself or whether you do it in a corporate setting without interpretation, it's, it's, it's great for the one who speaks it. It builds him up and it's not a selfish thing. It's a good thing. You pray in the Holy Ghost. That's a good thing. But prophecy, what's great about it is it edifies everyone, not just the believer, but everyone. So prophecy does three things, and Paul speaks of this in verse 3. He says that it speaks edification, exhortation, and comfort to the church. So I'm going to break down each one of those words, but right now let's go to verse 4. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. That's the beauty of prophecy in a church setting is this person over here needs a word of ex exhortation. This person over here needs a word of comfort. This person out back there, he needs a, 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 a word of edification or the whole body needs it. You know, a body can go, a, a church body can go through some all kinds of different things that affects every member. Like what we're going through right now, this affects every member. So like when I gave that word, I'm, I'm trying to think, of, not a word, but that that, uh, uh, that the first sermon I did after when this virus hit, and I, I can't even remember the title, but that was for the church as, as a whole because we are, Southeast Christian Center, we are a one body of, you know, one, one part of the whole body of Christ. So now tongues, like I said, it builds up the believer. A corresponding scripture for this would be uh, Jude chapter 20, or Jude verse 20. And it says, but you beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. So what is he saying there? Pretty much what he's saying here in 1 Corinthians 14 in verse uh, 4 is when a believer uses his private prayer language, he builds himself up. You know, when, when I pray in the Holy Ghost, I can't ever remember that when, whenever I've prayed in the Holy Ghost that I, uh, for just say 15 minutes, 20 minutes, a half hour, an hour, I can never uh, at one time can I ever say, wow, what a waste of time that was. No, why? Because every time that I pray in the Holy Ghost, I walk away and I go, I just feel charged. I feel lit up. What is that? It's the Holy Spirit. It's edifying. He, praying that prayer language, edifies me. It builds me up. Okay? Now, let's go to verse 5. I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesied. See, he's, so, so, not everybody in this instance here, now this is, now he's talking here, this isn't the private use, the, the private language of somebody. I was talking about the gift as the Holy Spirit wills 
in a service, okay? So he says, I wish that you all could do that, that the, the Holy Spirit would come upon every one of you, but what's more important is that you would all prophesy because it would edify the entire church. He says, for he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues, unless indeed he interprets. See, that's the difference. When they spoke in tongues in, in Acts chapter 10, and you can go there later, in Acts chapter 10 in Cornelius' house, there was, no, there was no interpretation. Why? Because that was the private gift. That was the gift of tongues for the individual believer. There was no interpretation given. In Acts chapter 19, when Paul met those believers, they, and they said, we never even heard of the Holy Ghost. And he laid hands on them and said, they spoke in tongues. There was no interpretation there either. Why not? Because it was the private prayer language for the believer. Now he's talking about in a corporate setting. Okay. So he says, unless indeed he interprets, the church may receive edification. So tongues plus interpretation equals prophecy. It's equal to prophecy because somebody is giving the interpretation to the tongue. Therefore, that will edify the body. Okay. So it's, it's equal to prophecy when it's interpreted. Now, it's really, notice this, that, uh, and I just counted it out, but this word, however it's used, or, or derivative thereof, edify, edifies, or edification is used six times in this chapter alone, okay? It's really all about the church as a whole, what it will receive. It's not about the individual member. It's about you, you have your time with God alone. That's great. And when you speak in tongues, you speak mysteries. So it's said in verse 2, okay? You speak mysteries. You say, well, Pastor Steve, I'm praying. I don't know what I'm saying. Yeah, but guess what? God does. And in, the, in Daniel, he said that God is a revealer of mysteries. See, it's what it is. It's not something that can't be known. It's just something that's hidden. That's what the word mystery means in the New Testament. Paul uses it frequently. And, and that word mystery isn't that it can't be known. It's just hidden to be revealed. Okay? So, now let's look at what... Uh, so, it's uh, as I said, it's not about me and what I can have for my own personal edification. It's about what can the church gain. Okay? So let's look at what prophesying does for the believer. And this is, remember, this is all based on love. It's all based on love. It's, it's a love for the church. It's, it's not getting puffed up because God uses me. That, and, and that's what happened, you know, can happen. And, and Paul wants to really put the kibosh on this. He's saying, listen, this is not about me. This is not about you and what gifts you have. It's about what can you, how can God use you for the body of Christ, for the, the church of Southeast Christian Center? How can God use you? Now, if we love the church, then we will pursue and desire spiritual gifts. Amen? Amen. Look at my little amen corner <laughs> right over here. Prettiest little amen corner I ever saw. So the, let's take that first word, edification. Now, this word in the Greek uh, is used either, it, it's interesting because it's only used in two ways. Either a building, a, a physical building, or meaning to build up or uh, edify. So it, it's translated sometimes as edify. Other times it's translated building. When, in fact, when I mentioned earlier, Matthew 24 and the Olivet Discourse, and they asked Jesus, notice Jesus, look at these beautiful buildings. That word there is the same word for edification, exact same word. So, and then now if you look at Ephesians 4, Paul uses this same thing in describing the, the, uh, the church. Part of, he uses this as, as an analogy for the, uh, the, uh, the church as a body and that it needs to be strengthened in uh, Ephesians 4 and verse 16. And he says, from whom the whole body joined and knitted together 
by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. So what's that? Well, he, here's an analogy of the body and, you know, there's, there's joints, there's ligaments, there's all these things that hold the whole body together and that when every part works as it should, when the fingers work as they should and the elbow works as it should and the arm socket works as it should and you see all those as different parts of the body of Christ, Jesus being the head, we being every other part of it, when it's all working together in love, it builds itself up. It's not tearing itself down, Amen. it's building itself up. Amen. See, that's why it's so important that you find your gifting, okay? I found mine. Now, Pastor, how did you know? Well, it, it was a process, okay? I start, and what I did, I just put my hand to the plow and got involved in church. It's that simple. I didn't start, I wasn't preaching over, I, was, I wasn't pastoring, I wasn't doing, what I was doing, I started off, um, what did I start off at, at New Song Church? I'm trying to think, oh, I was involved in the evangelism team, okay? I did that, and then, we, then I would go and feed the homeless, uh, down at the missions, and then I eventually, you know, the guy that was running it, the wonderful, awesome, if he ever sees this, Ron Bronski, you are awesome, brother, and his wonderful wife, Debbie. But anyway, he, you know, he said, man, why don't you share your testimony someday? And so, you know, there we were. So just, you know, but I started, and then I, I greeted at church. I did kids. I, obviously, you've heard my story. I've done youth, all these different things. So, when you do that, when each member finds his place in the body, it builds itself up. Okay, now, moving on, look at 1 Peter in chapter 1. And Peter talks about this very same thing. And he uses uh, this, this same analogy, but in, a, in, a, in actually using uh, stones in a building. So in verse in chapter two and verse four, you also well let's yeah verse four coming to him as to a living stone, Jesus being the living stone, being the chief cornerstone of the building. So it's, it's, it's really cool how Paul sees this stuff because first he shows it as a body and Christ being the head, and then a building. Well, a building you don't start at the top; you start at the bottom. And the chief cornerstone of the building, you have every building starts in a corner and moves out from there. And so he's the chief cornerstone. And, and he goes, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. Jesus was rejected by men, but chosen by God, and he's precious, you also. I just love this verse, you also. What? He was precious. And he was rejected by men. You may be rejected by men, but you're still precious in God's sight. And you, I, we are living stones and being built up it, to up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices except to God through Jesus Christ. So there it is, a being built up to a spiritual house. This stone here, this stone there, this stone here. Every believer needs to be built up, and God uses many ways to do that, and one of those is through the avenue of prophecy. Prophecy will build up the church. It will build up the believers, and, you know, when you talk about stones and things, I was thinking about this uh, story that Dion preached here one time, and, and I don't remember the exact sermon, but I remember the illustration, and I think he was talking about members and, and what how God uses them, but Dion was building a, a, a stone uh, facade in front of his house, and he had all these different pieces of stone, and as he started putting them there, he realized, oh, this one, and then he had to find the one that would fit best with that, and then he found, and he did a great job, and, he, and this one fits here, and as he was doing it, the Holy Spirit started speaking to him about, about the members in the body that God knows how to place that one there 
and, and then you think, well, this stone will fit. Oh, no, that doesn't fit there. So he grabbed, Dion grabbed another one. Oh, that fits perfect. And that's how God uses us. And he wants to use you and me to edify the body of Christ through the avenue of prophecy. There's many ways that God can use us, but this is just one of them. And so that, that exhortation, or that's the second one. So I want to say this. I can't tell you how many times that people have been edified in our services because someone gave a word that edified them, it built them up, it strengthened them. You know, uh, and like, you know, I get a lot of, you know, um, you know, I'll get prophecies. And let's just call it, you know, we get a word. Uh, Phil Derringer will give me a word and, and, and I will read those, okay? Uh, if you, if you're here and you say, Pastor Steve, I think I've got something, but I'm too, I, I, I'm just, I'm scared or I, uh, I don't know how to do it. I'm embarrassed. I, listen, write it down on a piece of paper. I'm not going to write your name. I'm going to say, Hey, so-and-so's got this. If you don't, I don't say, sometimes I say it's from Phil. Sometimes I don't. Now, Kelly will give a word during worship. Dion and Christy will, uh, often, uh, you know, but we don't want to just keep it to us four no more. I mean, God speaks to you during services. Listen, he does. He does. Yeah. He does. And you know what? God wants to use you. Plain and simple. Okay, let's go to number two. Exhortation. Now, this in the Greek means simply to encourage. But it also means to call to, to beseech, or to exhort, hence exhortation. So there will be times that a word will come to um, encourage the believer to do something. Like for instance, move closer to God. Um, uh, 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 drop, all, dro drop the weights, drop the sin, the, uh, drop the entanglements. This is in exhorting a person to do something. Walk in forgiveness. People come in here, listen, I've, been, I've done it. I've been in church. I walked in unforgiveness. I was walking and, and I'd get, you know, somebody would have a word or God would speak to me through the sermon. But uh, here's another one. Uh, people need to hear to be exhorted. They may be in a place where they're thinking of giving up, quitting, and, and, and there'll be a word that says, don't quit. You can do this. Stay the course. Don't put your, keep your hand to the plow. Don't look back. I mean, those are exhortations, okay? And it which should always come, and this is important, it should always come in a loving tone and a gentle atmosphere. It shouldn't be rah! You know, because that's not what it means. That's not what it means. You see, because Paul said to speak the truth in love. It may be hard to hear it, but it should come in a way that love is behind it. Okay? The, uh, some people think that, that prophecy, this prophecy, when it says exhort, it means to like condemn or something to that effect. And it doesn't. All right? Um, I, I've got a, a really amazing uh, story of a guy of a pastor uh, I mean I don't know if I should say this tell the story but uh, who it was a very 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 well-known pastor in this city at one time uh, he has since passed away gone home to be with the Lord and he told us this story about this prophet that was coming to their church and he was so excited to hear this guy because he, he he had taken over his uh, parents church and he wasn't liking it at all. He thought he was called to be an evangelist and not a pastor. And so he this he had heard about this uh, this prophet and that he was always spot on, right on. And and so he thought, well, I'm going to have him come in here and he's going to tell me that that I'm to lead the, and give the church to somebody else and I'm supposed to be you know a traveling evangelist with this very well known evangelist that he had been traveling with. Well, the prophet comes and, and he says, I got a word for you, pastor. And he's all excited. He's so, gosh, yes, the guys. And he said, he told him, he says, you've got an evil thing in your heart. Now, he didn't say it. And this pastor told us this story, a, a group of pastors. And he didn't say, 
You got an evil thing in your heart. He didn't say it like that. He said it gently and lovingly. And he said, you've got an evil thing in your heart. And it changed his life. And that pastor became an amazing, amazing pastor. He ended up being a, a pastor's pastor to many, many pastors. My point is this. When there is a word of exhortation that comes to get you to move somewhere or to change something, it should still come with the attitude of a, a loving and kindness and goodness. Amen? Okay, let's move on. Number three, comfort. The basic meaning of this is so simple and yet it is so sweet. It means to speak to someone and coming close to his side. You know, I can think of so many times when I was called to comfort somebody. You know, especially, uh, you know, funerals. Uh, you know, youth that are going through a tough time. Uh, married couples going through a tough time with children. I, just all kinds of times. And, and, and when I was looking this up in the Greek, I thought that was so cool that it means to speak to someone cl coming close to their side. So prophecy sometimes will be as the Lord will use somebody and it's as though the Lord will say, I'm here. I'm here. I'm not leaving. I'm walking through this with you. We're going to make it. You're going to make it because I'm with you. I'm right there next to your side. Isn't that awesome? I mean, you know, the Holy Spirit is called what? One of his names is the Comforter. Jesus said, I will give you another Comforter. Jesus is the Comforter, but he says, I'm going to give you another one, just like me. And he's going to bring comfort. And he does it through this gift of prophecy. And he brings comfort to the hearer. And the Father wants to use you and me to bring edification, exhortation, and comfort. Isn't that, I just think that's, and, and why? Why would he want to do that, Pastor? Because you're his kid. You're his child. You know, how many times have you, you as parents, uh, you as a, as a child, when you're parents, and they said, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. You know, you, you know um, how many times? You know, you, the one I just just came to me was the kid. You give your kid the balloon at the zoo, and he lets go of it, and there goes on. Oh, yeah, no, you know, it's okay. It's okay. There's another balloon over there that I will buy you. Okay. I mean, there's all kinds of different things that happen, and you just bring your arm alongside and say, and you bring comfort. And that's what the Holy Spirit wants to do in a church setting, in the avenue of prophecy. See. You don't, you can't work for it. You can't earn it. You can't work it up. You just, pre when, when we have an atmosphere where worship, like I said last week, when we're worshiping and you're listening to, to the comforter, you listen to him speak, shut everything down and listen to him, enter into that place, engage in the worship. And then as he speaks and you go, there's somebody here who needs to hear that God is madly in love with you. Or you've got a word, you, you hear something on the inside of you and it says, don't quit. And, and, and you go, what, 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 what is that? You know what that is? That's the comforter talking to you. That's the Holy Spirit. And you know what you're to do? Write it down. Hand it to the head usher, whoever it might be, if it's Mark, if it's Phil, whoever it is, any usher. If you have to, just walk up here and hand it to me. I don't care. You know, just be a little discreet. Okay, whatever. I mean, just God know that, that God wants to use us. Okay. Now, when we get back to church, I want you to start thinking about this. I want you to start thinking about it now. See, preparation time is never wasted time. Now's the time to prepare your heart and say, you know, Pastor Steve, I've heard, I've heard all kinds of different times where God has spoken to me that somebody needs to hear this, and I just haven't done it. Well, you basically, you know what? Can I encourage you with something? You haven't obeyed, but you know what? Now's the time to do it. 
and I've done the same thing. I've done the same thing. Okay, now let's go to verse 26 of chapter 14. We're going to close right here. How is it then, brethren? Whenever you come together, each of you has a psalm, has a teaching, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. Let all things be done, there it is, for building up. Let everything be done for edification. Now, does that mean when we come in here that every single person has something that they're going to share? No, I don't believe that. But I believe Paul is speaking in broad terms that everybody can be used of God in a certain situation, okay? That just you just come prepared to be used in the service when it comes to the gifts of the Spirit, okay? Especially prophecy, because prophecy will build up, prophecy will exhort, prophecy will bring comfort to the hearers. So, prepare your hearts, start now, start now. You know, especially, you know, here's one. How about when you have your devotion time and you maybe you've listened to some worship music and, and you know, God lays something in your heart. You know what? Put it on Facebook. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> Put it on Facebook. Sure, why not? Build somebody up. Exhort somebody. Comfort somebody. All right? And then... Uh, and then remember this, during, as I said before, when we're having our worship and we're even in the praise part, there may, God may just engage in the worship, engage in the praise and listen to that still small voice and he will speak to you and he will tell you, I have something for the church. I want to use you. Isn't that awesome? The God of the universe would want to use somebody like you, somebody like me, somebody like Annie. Isn't that awesome? And that's our God. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your truth. I thank you for every here today, God, every single here today, that they would want to be used of you, that they would pursue love first, and they would pursue spiritual gifts, especially prophecy. Thank you, Father. Well, have a great weekend, the rest of the weekend. And remember, preparation time, never wasted time. Prepare your hearts for when we get back here and to be used of God in the gift of prophecy. In Jesus' name, amen.